This is a quick introduction to Reactor's life sequencer. Users of Reactor 5 and Reactor 6 might recognize life from an ensemble called New School, um, which has both the life sequencer and an 8 voice tone generator bolted onto it. Um, before we get into exactly how life works, it's worth establishing that this is based on um, John Conway's Game of Life. Um, you can read about mo that more in the wiki, and I'll include a link to that. Um, this is a sort of um, maths experiment, if you like, whereby you have a grid, in this case 32 by 32, but it can be um, um, any sort of combination, and you have uh, cells which exist in that, and in the right-hand grid, those cells will... Um, live uh, um, or die depending on certain rules over um, a course of 16 sixteenth notes. If I just clear this and we have a look at one cell on its own you'll see that it dies out straight away um, whereas if we had a couple of cells then due to the rules of the game they will either um, uh, exist or die um, and this will continue for um, a finite number of evolutions. Um, the more complex, the more interesting patterns we get. Um, uh, there are lots of parameters about this. I'm not really going to go into a lot of depth to right now. Um, the most important things to realize is that we can load certain presets in from here um, by clicking the load button. As I mentioned already, we can change the X and Y um, axis and we can change the number of steps and how those steps relate. If you're using this with a DAW and making electronic music you might want to go for multiples of four. Um, however, you can get all sorts of interesting polyrhythms using 6, 12 or some more esoteric values like 11, 13, 19, whatever. Um, you won't hear anything at the moment because of the way I've set this patch up. Uh, let's quickly clear this and if I change the grid maybe there we go. You might be able to see a bit more clearly. We've got different uh, cell colours in the background. There are eight different colours, and if you've used New School, you might be familiar that the tone generator has those eight corresponding colours underneath it. Um, the way that life works is that these colours will trigger one of the eight outputs. Um, and a really important thing to understand about this is that. There's not any pitch information coming from life at all. It's just a simple on-off. I'm going to put this back to 32 by 32 so we can get some slightly uh, richer patterns. And um, you can hear, if I just um, press a MIDI note, you can hear what's, um, you know, how I've, how I've programmed this to be. If you want to read a bit more about exactly every parameter on this and the tone generator underneath, you should um, read the article which I'll link to in the description, which is a far more in-depth look than what we're going to do today. What I want to look at more specifically today is how I've taken the eight outputs of life and made a very simple eight voice um, sequence uh, um, oscillator, rather. So let's have a look inside this macro that I've um, made, and you'll see that um, whilst it looks a bit jumbled, it's 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 quite simple. There's just lots of things uh, replicated another seven times. So um, all of the inputs from life, if I put wire debugging on, you'll be able to see, will be either a zero or a one, which is you know either an on or an off. It's, it's as simple as that. Um, they come in on these eight inputs here and they get sent out to eight different um, macros that will control our envelope settings. Uh, just very quickly, we've got a really simple attack and release uh, knob which will control the attack of all eight envelopes and the release of all eight envelopes. Um, that was really just for simplicity. If you wanted more control, it's very easy to do. You just have loads of knobs and I didn't want to faff around with that too much for this demonstration. If we have a look inside one of the envelope macros, we can see our attack and release knobs come in here. This isn't actually a simple AR envelope, it's actually an ADR envelope. Um, although I've just got the release controlling both the decay and, and the release. Um, if you wanted to make this more advanced, there are all sorts of envelopes in the um, LFO and envelope page running from simple ADR envelopes up to things with various breakpoints and multi-stage things and what have you. If we take the gate input straight into the gate input for the envelope, you'll hear the voice is always on. So this is one particular voice. Um, however, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying that by my QWERTY keyboard gate input. And if you multiply anything by zero, the output will always be zero. Okay, So what this allows me to do 
is switch it on and off. Whenever I play a note, it will trigger not only that voice, but it will trigger all the voices because they're all wired up like this. Um, the reason it's 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 not giving out a one, it's giving out this um, 0.6299 something or other, is because that's how the QWERTY keyboard's velocity defaults in Reactor. Uh, it's quite simple to get a one if you use something like a compare module. Um, I think if you were to take the greater than zero, it would output a one, as you can see, but it's not really important. Um, we're not having the velocity impact our amp amplitude um, that much anyway. Um, if you wanted to have um, more control over that, you could do all sorts of things, but I don't want to get into that too much now. So anyway, uh, envelope one will in turn go to the amplitude input of a macro for oscillator one. And here we've just got a really simple sine wave. We've got an input for the amplitude, which will come from our envelope, and we've got an input for the pitch, and that'll go out to a mixer. Um, again, if you wanted to build upon this, there are loads of really interesting sine waves, um, uh, if I can find them, uh, with you know FM. Uh, we've got sync things where we can do all sorts of stuff with phase. Um, triangle waves would work quite nicely. Um, if you're going to go for squares or saws, I would consider you know running them into a filter so you don't get a really buzzy sound. But anyway, just for simplicity, I went for the most simple sine wave that there was. Um, now, because of course life doesn't actually have anything to do with pitches, um, I've got done the pitches ourselves. If we go inside here, uh, this isn't done in the most efficient way, but it was just the quickest and easiest way that I could think of to start with. So our MIDI input um, comes in here, and you can see I'm playing note 48, note 50, 52, 53, etc. Um, now that's just a MIDI value between 0 and 127. Um, that will run into this macro, uh, which is here, and that gets run into the bass input for um, each of my eight voices. Um, now this scale control here will just go between major and minor. I'm using a multi-text to display that major and minor. But really what it's doing is outputting a zero for major and a one for minor. And what that's doing is going into the position input for this macro and that will change the position in a selector module. I'll come on to that a little bit more when we get out of the first voice. The reason the first voice only has uh, one input um, is because I wanted to ensure that whatever note you play, so if you play a C note, the lowest voice will always be a C. So um, we have a zero there. Um, so if we take our bass input, which is 48, add zero is 48. Okay, so that's really simple. And I think some of the other voices like this voice here um, we've got the interval of 7, so if we have you know, the input of 48 plus 7, it gives us 55, and that's um, a perfect fifth above the root. So whether you're in a major or a minor scale, I've always got some intervals which are always going to be fixed. I think um, also the octave as well, which might be number 6. So yeah, again, 48 plus 12 is 60. Um, the rest of them, that's where this major and minor scale thing makes a difference. It's sending out a 0 or a 1, which is changing the position in a selector module. And then we've got our intervals here. So when we're in major mode, uh, this is going to output a 2. If we go to minor, it's going to output a 3. So let's choose. Um, here we go. Our base input is now 50. So 50 plus 2 is obviously 52. And then plus, if I change that to that, plus 3, it's 53. And that will do the same for the third interval. We've got between four or five. The fifth interval, I think the seventh and the eighth. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually using pentatonic scales rather than traditional major and minor. And the reason for that is that pentatonic scales throw up less um, dissonant intervals. They're kind of idiot proof, if you like. With uh, normal major scales, we can get all sorts of complications when the major seventh interval, which is 11, um, you know, might, that can clash with the root, which is 0 or 12. It can clash with um, 5, which is a perfect fourth. And there are all sorts of other things. You can also go for way more exotic options than just major and minor. And there's all sorts of modes and synthetic scales and stuff. And whilst that is a really interesting prospect down the line um, for this video, I just wanted to make it really dead simple so we don't get really horrible discordant um, intervals. Um, so if I just um, play a note, you'll see that we have um, a loop of 16 sixteenths, which is one bar, and that will execute um, the game of life depending on the cells I put in the left. So if 
I was to clear this, even if I play a note, once that's done, it's going to do nothing. If I go for something quite simple, we can even then get some really interesting um, patterns. Sounds like a bit like the Akira soundtrack um, a little bit. So of course, as I mentioned, we've got our attack and release. Um, and um, this sounds obviously really great with delay and things like this. This is a polyphonic module, sorry, this is a monophonic module, I should say, rather. Um, even though the original life sequence is um, got eight separate voices, I tried doing it in, in polyphonic mode, and, and whilst it worked and didn't seem to perform any differently, it was um, it was it was quite loud, and um, this seemed to work fine in monophonic mode. Um, this is obviously really just a super rudimentary hack. Um, I'd be interested in seeing what other people can do making life into a sort of um, generative um, scale quantizer. Um, so yeah, if you do have any suggestions, please let me know. Um, thanks very much for watching.